He's alive! <laughs> Still remember that from the old or old horror movie. Welcome aboard. Now, speaking of horror movies, happy tax day to all of y'all. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Welcome to Cliff Notes Live. Welcome to episode uh, 173, I think. Ah, that needs to all kind of add on after a while. Can you believe somewhere down the road, my ancestors, grandkids, great grandkids, whatever, Someone's going to say, you know, there's like 170 hours of your great granddad out there talking. What's he talking about? Yeah, nothing. Not really. And, and there, someone's going to make him watch that. Who knows? Anyway, welcome to Cliff Notes Live. Let me start off with a big old SKD 143. Love my wife, love my kids, love reality TV, especially love you guys who come out here every Monday night to, to spend the evening with me, or at least an hour of the evening. And I'm not forgetting those of you who watch on replay as well, because I know some of y'all are out there. I appreciate both both groups. Thank you so much. Just makes for a better way to spend the, uh, the evening. And we especially need that being tax day and all that. Uh, so welcome aboard. Thank you all. If you have already done so, Big Brother season's getting ready to start. I guess it's already started with Big Brother Canada, but Big Brother USA is getting ready to start as well. May not be a bad idea if you're thinking about it to subscribe to my channel. Maybe turn on notifications. Maybe even throw a thumbs up out there as well. I appreciate all of those. Uh, but as I start dropping some extra episodes for Big Brother and all that, well, who knows? We may do a cast preview. Who knows what we'll do this season with Big Brother? Uh, we're going to keep it fun, though. So if you're if you're subscribed, you'll get the notifications and all of that. So you may want to think about it. Uh, yeah, it's almost here. Get, get your sleep in while you can. Uh, so... Uh, welcome to all of you. All right, let's see real quick out here before we get into uh, a few stories here and there and reality TV and movies and all that. Uh, let me real quickly just see who's out here. Mark Taylor. Mark, how are you doing? I hope you're doing fantastic. Marilyn Sutherland. Ma, how are you doing, Ma? Uh, let's see. Jake the Horror Movie Geek. Hey, Jake. Uh, Brian Hosteller. Uh, We'll, we'll talk about Brian here in a second. Uh, let's see. Terry Thomas, how are you doing? Terry, Cindy Heyer, Ed Brewer, JP, uh, Laura Lewis. I love seeing all these names out here. Amanda Lowe, uh, Taylor Mangus, Karen Hummer. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, is that about it? Lisa D. I didn't want to forget you. And then Anoe as well. Uh, Tammy Flanagan. Get my eyes checked. Uh, I've been outside. It's that solar eclipse. I'm still trying to recover. Uh, White Garrett as well. White, how are you, sir? Andy W. Uh, and let's see if that's about it. Laura Lewis, Lisa D, Karen Berkeley, uh, Berkey. And I think that's about it. And Fitzbits and Misfire and Terry Atler Jr. I didn't want to leave y'all three out. If I missed any names, sorry about that. I tried to scroll through as quick as I could. I hope y'all are doing well. Uh, I was running a little bit behind. I made a little bit of a mistake today. Uh, as I mentioned, tax day. I had a bill completely unrelated to taxes, uh, but one that I needed to drop off uh, this afternoon. Stopped by the local post office. That place was a madhouse. People in line everywhere. Uh, I'll try to rush it in with forms. I went by a FedEx office. There's a big trade show uh, that I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of work for uh, and working at and representing and all that. Uh, this week. So I'm trying to get all that stuff done. People all over the FedEx office trying to sell, uh, send stuff. People all over the post office trying to send stuff. And just that absolute madhouse that I didn't want to have anything to do with. I waited until the last minute. I did my taxes over the weekend, but they're done for now. For me, everything else, I got that taken care of. Before going further, Bowie, my brother, Bowie, the, who's been out here once before, uh, Bowie was on The Apprentice, my youngest brother. Bowie says, howdy from my nieces. Well, howdy, nieces. I'm assuming those nieces could be uh, Helen and Alice. Yeah, I've got got a couple of nieces. I hope y'all are doing fantastic. I'm trying to think if there's any stories I was going to tell tonight that I may need to hold off on. Yeah, probably not. Uh, they'll get to hear all kinds of goofy stories. Uh, but hey, you're welcome. I'm glad y'all are out here. Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, all the people at post office. It's crazy. Not the craziest that I've ever seen, though. I remember back in the day when I was working for an oil company, I was working over, spent a lot of time working in California, actually up in Bakersfield, which is kind of the oil region for, for California. But coming back in to L.A. one night, I was catching a red-eye flight left to like that. 12 30 one in the morning something like that it must have been even later than that because i just happened to be 
in downtown LA at about 1130 or so at night on tax day. I have never seen more panicky people in, in the world ever. Uh, worse than, than us fleeing hurricanes or people fleeing volcanoes or uh, Philadelphia, Philly celebration. I, the, the craziest crowd I've ever seen. Everyone in line uh, in their cars trying to make it to the post office to get their tax forms postmarked before midnight occurred. And the guy who's driving said, look, we're, we're just stuck in. We got nowhere to go. It's going to take us forever. We quickly realized that one of the reasons it was taking so long is a lot of people had just abandoned their cars because they didn't think they were going to make it, hopped out of their cars and just started running towards the post office. Well, every time someone did that and their car was just in the middle of the road, that meant more people behind realized what was going on. They started hopping out of their cars. Next thing you know, we look up and there's got to be a hundred or two people all running towards the post office. All of them with their envelopes in their hands, trying to get to the post office five minutes to go or whatever. Some of the people are wearing robes, pajamas. They hadn't thought they'd do anything getting out of the car, just drive by, drop it off. Oh, no, no. They didn't want to make it that easy. It looked like a zombie attack. Truly, it was, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. So that always made me think that, yeah, I'm not waiting until 1145. I don't care how much money I may owe. I'm not ever pushing it that close because people go crazy when they think the federal government's going to come after them if they don't file their taxes. So for those of you who had to file, I hope you're already done. For those of you who didn't have to file, I am a little envious of you, but but I got it done. You know, it's great. And, and I won't go forever about this. We'll talk about some other stuff. When I did Big Brother, I live here in Texas. We don't have state income tax. But when I did Big Brother, living through three and a half months in uh, in California, you better think they didn't try to take a, a big old bite out of everything uh, that goes into Big Brother. Old Jackson Mickey from my season, one half a billion dollars. By the time you walk out the door after paying California state taxes, hey, you lucky you get a hundred thousand bucks out of it. They uh yeah, they they really like those game show winnings uh when when you're over in California. So I, I'll just leave it at that. I mean, I will say, I'll say one more thing. I met a person, a person that I won't go into any detail or description of, a person who may have competed in another season of Big Brother who may or may not have told me that ever since they got out of the Big Brother house, all the money they've done doing different things has maybe never quite gotten reported to the IRS. And I'm just going to leave it at that. And it may or may not be a story I actually heard. So anyone work for the IRS, don't, don't come looking for it. <laughs> and please don't audit me either. I, just, I, I didn't mean I, I shouldn't have said that at all. But yeah, there, there's a few people that... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're young, you win half a million dollars, and who knows? So it was not for my season. I, I, I'll say that. Uh, you would have thought Richard Hatch won, taught everyone a lesson. He won the first season of Survivor. Y'all remember that? He won a million dollars. He didn't pay his taxes. He said, oh, I thought they were going to do that for me. Yeah, that's not the way it works. And and he, he actually went to jail for a little while. That's rough. I, I spent three and a half months in, in Big Brother jail. I don't want to go to the real big house. I, I'm happy with the Big Brother house instead. All right, let, let's move on from taxes into other things, other more, more fun things, right? All right, uh, let's see. Talk about Mark Taylor. Who are the top uh, contestants on Survivor? For those of you who didn't watch the last episode, uh, plug your ears for a little bit because we'll talk a little bit about spoilers. How crazy is it that you have 13 contestants and suddenly you break the teams up or you break those 13 up into two different tribes and two people go home suddenly now. And were we 13 or had we already lost it and gotten it down to 12 by last week? I can't remember, but suddenly now you've got a group of only six people. Yeah. I think we'd already gotten down to uh, to 12. You've only got a group of six people. There's nowhere to hide. That's the difference between survivor and big brother. I think in big brother so the first half of the season, at least, you had a lot of people that, you know, unless you did something like talk too loud in the boat room, uh, you felt like maybe you were going to be safe. But suddenly when it goes down to six people and there's a 18%, 17% ch chance it could be you, there's just nowhere to hide. And we saw that with the, the two separate uh, tribal councils. Man, I felt bad for Tim. I think he uh, just had too many too many fires in the, uh, too many uh, pokers in the fire. Oh, that's, that's, I don't know. Anyway. Seems like he maybe was talking and trying to work with a few too many people. It, it bit him in the end a little bit. The last non-jury member that went home, 
I thought they were gunning for him uh, already. I'm not really too surprised about that. Now I'm a little more surprised that Soda went home. I, I would have said she was, she felt like she was doing pretty well. And as it turns out, not quite so much. I thought she would have gone a little bit further. Uh, so all of that, the, the question was, who, who are my, the contestants? Maybe I'm cheering for who I think is going to win. I'm not sure how it was phrased. Uh, I got to say, I'm still kind of Hunter. I He just, I think he's doing pretty well. And he just doesn't seem to be getting the attention on him. I think Charlie uh, and, and Ben are both doing pretty well. Now, Charlie, I thought he maybe was in trouble last week, but just because of the way things worked out in terms of random picks and all of that, he was kind of off on his own in terms of former tribe alliances. He survived. He, he made it happen. And old Venus, I got to say, she's a little bit like, a, oh, who was it last season I, who called out uh, Bruce at the very start? And, and then the more she played, the more I started cheering her on. I kind of feel the same way with Venus. When I first saw Venus, I thought, man, I don't know. She's kind of rubbed me a little bit the wrong way. She's so cocky and, and she's she goes on to uh, she does a lot of social media uh, appearances and talking and posting and everything else. Uh, and, and she somehow survives week after week. And every week she does, I, I'm giving her a little bit more credit. She, she may be a little confident about her position, but maybe that's not the worst thing in the world when you're playing a game like Survivor. Uh, so she's sticking around a long time also. Uh, Tevin, I, I think, is... I think he's doing great. I just feel like he he may be doing too much. And then Q, I really like Q, but about uh, I can't figure out when he gets these little moody streaks where he just kind of acts, I don't know, he acts just like the world's falling down around him. Uh, I think a few people last week said, you know, sit in Q show just because he wants us to do this, just because he went and told so-and-so this doesn't mean we're going to do it. So I think Q's got to be a little careful as well, but there's just something about the way he's playing that, that I kind of admire also. So I'm still not to the point where I've settled on just one or two people. I feel like most people playing a pretty good game right now. It's still a little bit up in the air, so we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm really enjoying Survivor this season. I'm really enjoying uh, The Amazing Race. Uh, such an advantage, Amazing Race, when you speak the, the local language. We saw the... Uh, uh, the boyfriends that speak Spanish and how well they did. Just, yeah, it really helps when you can speak the language. Uh, Sur uh, Jake the Horror Movie Geek saying Survivor and Amazing Race are both on point this season. Very exciting. I 100% agree. I they, It's been a lot of fun. Uh, amazing Race, as I said last week, I like when they have to finagle their airline flights and everything, which they aren't doing. I hope that comes back. But even without that, uh, I've, I've enjoyed it so far. I, it's been a lot of fun. But yeah, speaking of local language helps. I know when I used to do all my travels, I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I'm fluent enough that if I ever really got in trouble, I could at least, you know, I used to may, I could at least ask for help and explain and tell them what I was going on and things like that. Just having that little bit of, of extra knowledge always made me feel so much more confident anytime I was working anywhere uh, down in South America. Even in Brazil, where they don't speak Spanish, but Portuguese is close enough. You think, yeah, I could wing it if I had to. Uh, but when I'd go over to China or Russia, I don't speak a whole lot of Chinese or uh, Russian, either one. So you always felt a little bit more isolated uh, in, in some of those areas. I, I did. But yeah, I, I've enjoyed them in South America. I'm ready for them to hightail it over somewhere else. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm, I'm still waiting to when they go to India or some of those countries where it's just so many people and always makes it a little bit more, more entertaining as well. But yeah, I'm loving both of those shows, Jake. I absolutely agree with you. They just do it well. All right, let's see what else we've got here. All right. Any word on the start date for Big Brother? Y'all's guess is as good as mine. I, I've, I, in fact, I went right before I started the show to see if I could maybe find something on it. Nothing new has been posted. I'm assuming mid-June, somewhere right around there. I have heard that it, it will be a summertime show as opposed to last season. It started really late in the year. The rider strike's gone. We don't have to worry about that. So, yeah, I fully expect it to be be all summer long, which good and bad. I, a whole lot more good. I, I just didn't like it when it got into the fall and all that. The summertime, it, it's a little interesting because we love to go to the lake. I love the outdoors, go to the lake, do a little fishing, and, and just enjoy the outdoors here in Texas and the water and all that. But it's hard because you do that in the middle of the summer and 
Uh, I've got the fish and the crickets and the frogs and the water on, on one side. And I've got my freaking little cell phone on the other side playing the live feeds on Big Brother. So I can try to keep up with everything that's going on. Thank God I'm a multitasker. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. I remember when I was inside the Big Brother house sitting there July out on the, the side of the pool, laying out with all these youngsters and uh, hanging out. I thought, God, these guys at work are going to absolutely hate me that I am taking a three and a half month long vacation and just laying out by the pool and, and trying to fit in with these guys and just taking life easy. What an incredible experience for a whole lot of reasons. Most of it just the chance for me to kind of battle the the wits and, and all that, but just hanging out and, and not having to worry about anything except the fact that 15 people want to stab you in the back and boot you out the door. But other than that, nothing to worry about while playing Big Brother. I, what a fun summer that was. Uh, but this summer is going to be a great one because we got another season of Big Brother. Uh, I, I love it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm getting ready. I need to sleep a little bit more and get ready for that. All right. Uh, Ed Brewer saying, Richard House for House of Villains 2. I haven't seen House of Villains. I've heard so much about it. I need to, God, just another thing to put on the list. I've heard it's great. Uh, I could see Richard Hatch. I, was he a villain? You know, it's interesting. Maybe later, uh, because he did, when they came back, when it was he and Sue Hawk and uh, Colby Donaldson and all, uh, Jerry Math, Math, Matthews, I think, when they came back and did the kind of the first All-Stars he kind of did some things that Susan, Susan Hawk got upset about. And I think she was legitimately, uh, legitimately uh, had a reason to be a little upset. But during his first season, a little bit he was portrayed as a villain. But I think more than anything else, it's just that Richard Hatch, before anyone else on the island figured it out, realized that it wasn't really about surviving the elements. It wasn't really about who's going to contribute and build the fanciest shelter or do the most cooking. He understood before anyone else that that was just peripheral. It was about surviving the other people. That was the biggest issue. Now we all understand that and strategy comes into play and all that. I remember when the first survivor came out, that first episode, I don't think we all appreciated that. I didn't, I was expecting it to be more of a show where they were working together and, We'd all be hunky dory, kumbaya, and the person who just refused to carry their weight. We're going to boot them out, and you're going to end up with a couple of people who are the hardcore survivors, the people that you would want on an island with you if you were stranded for real. And that's not what Survivor is, as, as we later found out. So I, I, I accept Richard Hatch as a villain on, on this new reality show, but I don't know. I think he just was very smart and very understanding, very cognizant when he played that first season. What an incredible season. Susan Hawk, uh, Rudy, Richard Hatch. There are a lot of people on there. I a lot of fun. So many years ago. All right. Tim Pipe is saying, are you watching Big Brother Canada this year? I tried. And here's the thing, Tim. Some of it I blame on global TV because I could never find the episodes. It, it just drove me crazy. I tried to watch. I had a little site that would show it. Uh, during the live episodes, I could watch it live. But if I didn't just happen to be watching right when it came on, it was tough for me to find the episodes because they were pulling them off of YouTube as quick as they went up. And so for a lot of reasons, I couldn't keep up with it. Uh, and then Nicole got married and I'm so happy I went up to her wedding. But that was like the first, second week of the show. And, and that took, took me out of action for another week or so. Between all of that, and I'm not the kind, I don't like going in and reading recaps uh, in Entertainment Weekly, things like that. I want to watch it live. I want to see the people's faces, see the people's reactions. Uh, just reading it, you know, it just doesn't do as much for me. So that's the long answer. The short answer is no. I, I kind of see the blurbs on social media. I know a little bit about what's going on. I heard there was a, a huge, very interesting twist that, that just came up a, a couple of days ago. I know that the two returning guests are, are still there and, and seeming to run the house in a lot of ways, but I couldn't give you a lot of details. Once it's all over, I may go back and try to watch the episodes uh, because there is a lot of strategy at play up there. And the fact that their HOH cannot compete for power veto, which is kind of interesting because that means there's a much greater chance up there that you aren't going to have, you won't have the same person as HOH also winning the veto. It's going to have to be someone else. 
So you tend, it seems like, to have a lot more vetoes being used, a lot more flip-flopping and, and things like that. I, I've always wondered if, if Big Brother USA would ever consider that. Not, not that I've heard of so far, but one year it'd be kind of interesting to see how that changed the gameplay. But yeah, I haven't seen it. I'm a little bit keeping up, but I'll keep up more a little bit later. All right, Mark James Weber saying, uh, my favorites are Hunter, Liz, and Mar Mariah. Maria? I think it's Maria, right? I actually like uh, Hunter, absolutely. Liz, yeah, okay. I, I just don't have a good feel for her yet. Uh, Maria, she's, uh, yeah, I'm cheering for her because she's, I was going to say she's one of the, the older, not old, one of the older, I think she is, right? Uh, they've got such an age range in Survivor, unlike Big Brother sometimes. But uh, yeah, I thought she's she's done a pretty good job working with everyone as well. So I got, I got no issues with those three whatsoever. Uh, Cindy is saying, Soto was a surprise for me too. I don't know that I could honestly say I thought she was going to make it all to the final three. Having said that, though, I wouldn't have been surprised if she did because she seemed to be aware. She seemed to be playing the game. Uh, I think she just maybe got too tight with with the wrong people, a little too confident that that the wrong people had her back. Yeah, it, it, cutthroat games that, that we play. And now, what does it say about the the human condition that? So many people enjoy watching games where it involves you betraying and lying and stabbing in the back. It's it's like watching gladiator fights, except everyone walks away at the end. It just must be something inside us that that wants to see how people. I don't think it's all the bad stuff. I think it's more that we all enjoy watching to see how people respond when they're threatened, when their backs are against the wall, when when they know that they can't trust anyone who rises and who falls in those kind of situations. I, I think we're always looking for the heroes uh, in, in these shows. And, and, and we sure are quick to point out the villains as well, aren't we? But anyway, I just, uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have this kind of reality show. And, and now it's such a, at least for some of us, I know there's a whole bunch of people who don't watch any of this, but we do, right? All right, uh, let's see. Jake the Horror Movie Geek is saying, is Q getting too comfortable I like him though. I, I think that's absolutely right. The the edit seems like they're showing him maybe a little little too confident sometimes. And Ed Brewer saying Q talking too much. He's going to be a guitar on himself. Absolutely. What? I can't remember who it was he was talking to last week where he came out and said, I just told him. And this I said, we aren't playing Q's game. Oh, why? Just because he says this doesn't mean that we're going to uh to do it. I think he was flip-flopping on the vote a little bit. And yeah, I I've said this multiple times, regardless of the reality show, I don't want anyone ever feeling too comfortable about their position in the game. And when they do, it, there, there's always a little karma that, that sometimes I get burned if they get a little too cocky. And, and I always, always want to say that. Nah, maybe not always, but I, I like to see people always sweating bullets and, and fighting their way through. Someone like Charlie last week, he thought he was gone. He was fighting. He was doing what he could. He lasted. Yeah, that, that's what I like to see. That's those the hero edits that I see. But yeah, and that's the other thing too. Survivor, Big Brother's all live. So you can't really read a lot into the edit because they don't know any more than anyone else what's going to happen a week, a month uh, from now. Uh, whereas with Survivor, they the editors already know who's going to win this thing at the end. So I've always thought and, and assumed that there's going to be a little bit of a bias in the edits. And the fact that they're now showing Q getting called out a little bit, talked out, uh, talked about a little bit when he's not uh, with other folks, it all makes me think that it's going to come to a head here before too long, and he's either going to survive it and, and excel because of it, or he's going to be snuffing the torch and, and heading out the door. We'll see, but yeah, I, th I think hard times are coming for Q at some point. But having said that, I kind of like I, there's just something about it. I kind of like watching him feeling so so comfortable about the game he's playing. Our right, Cindy saying uh you were, was an extra on the remake of Annie with Jamie Foxx. Well, that's pretty cool, Cindy. You always surprise me. Every every time we talk it seems like there's something going on. That's pretty cool. Uh the sun will come out. Yeah, y'all know the song. Well, that's pretty cool. I where did they did they film that up in in the the Washington area cuz I know you're up there now and uh are you just traveling all over doing doing extra shots here and there? That's uh, that's cool. I so now when I watch Annie, forget Jamie Fox, for forget it. I'll be watching in the background for for you, Cindy. And when I see it, I'm gonna 
have to pause it, put a big old circle and screenshot, and all right, I'll be watching. I probably would not have watched Annie, but now I've got some incentive to do so because I got a friend on the show. So that's cool. Congra congratulations. Who knows? There may be some director out there who says, forget the main, the people on the front. It's that person in the back that we want to go talk to. You never know. All right. Uh, Karen Hummer is saying, have you ever thought of writing a book about your adventures? Yes. I, I've actually been asked, uh, not like random houses approach me or you know, uh, Jacques Cousteau Society. Hey, Cliff, we'd love to hear about <laughs> Big Brother. No, no, no one like that. But I, I've had uh, relatives. I, my mom and other people have said, oh, you ought to do. My, my mom still thinks I work for the CIA. Not saying anything. I, I, she actually does think I work for the CIA because I spent so much time overseas and getting into weird situations. And, uh, and, and I've been in some weird ones. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, if for no other reason than just for, for my my families, my descendants on down the road, uh, because as much fun as I had on, on Big Brother, that would just be one chapter, maybe a, a decently large chapter because of different things it's led to. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've been in crazy places all over the world dealing with crazy situations. Oil and gas is not located always in the most friendly touristy area. Sometimes they put you out in the middle of nowhere and you just kind of do what you have to do to survive. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it would be fun to do. Now here's one thing, and I don't know if I've ever said this or not. I, I didn't do a video to go on Big Brother. I actually showed up at a local casting call, right? Uh, I, I show up, uh, I get a call a little bit later and I'm told, Cliff, hey, you know, we'd like to talk to you a little bit more. Could you come by... XYZ location uh, tomorrow and, and be prepared to film because we'd like to get you on, on film a little bit. We didn't film during the little group sessions for the casting call. Yeah, sure. Fine. No problem. So I show up at this thing, but I realize that I really need to, if they're going to talk to me for an extended period of time, because I think I talked for about an hour or so. And I knew if I was going to talk for an extended period of time, I really needed to, uh, to get an idea uh, to tell stories because I told during my quick little 15 seconds in front of the casting people, if I'm in the house 99 days, I got a hundred stories to tell. So I thought, all right, I better be prepared to back that up. So I had already gone out and created a document I know, a few months before, just for fun of all the different stories that had happened in my life. And I, I grabbed all of that. I quickly tried to put a little, few little notes in them, a little bit more descriptions about what happened the night before I printed it all out uh, to take with me. So while I'm waiting for my turn, I could read through it and make sure I remembered the stories I wanted to tell. Well, I also had to print out and complete the entire big brother application, which is about 40 pages, maybe not that much, but it's a lot of pages. So I printed all that as well, fill it all out, put it all in a manila envelope, went to my casting call, talked to, to everyone for, for a, uh, an hour and all. It felt like it did pretty well. Uh, got done, turned in my manila envelope that had my application. What I did not realize is I had forgotten to take out all of my pages of all my travel stories all over the world. And the times that I was almost robbed, thought I was going to be on a plane crash, slept under bulletproof blankets, all these different adventures that I'd had were still in as part of my application. And I think, and I've been told that, that having those extra stories, I actually had one of the people say, Cliff, man, I, I read through all those stories uh, that you left with us for that application. And I just uh, amazed, amazed. I loved every bit. It was so much fun reading those stories. And I didn't have the heart to tell them that I didn't plan on doing that. I just forgot to take it out. That was just my own personal notes. It worked. Who knows? That, that may have made the difference. And it was just purely an accident on my part. You never know. But yeah, so th that's, th that's, again, the long answer, short answer. I, I, yeah, I think I'd like to. It's just a matter of finding finding the time to to make it happen. Put me back in the Big Brother house again. Give me a notepad. I'll, I'll journal for for every time in there. Wouldn't that be boring to watch someone just writing in the journal uh, while they're stuck in that house? Uh, so maybe I'll have to do it on my own time. But yeah, one of these days, I think that'd be fun to do. Uh, my mom is saying, do it. Write a book on your adventures. Yeah, my mom still, as I said, she thinks I was in the CIA. She's just waiting for me to to drop the other shoe and and talk about all the crazy CI adventures uh, that, that I'm not allowed to talk about. <laughs> Y'all think I'm kidding. I, I, I'm not kidding. She, she really does think that. 
And, and there's a lot of people who wouldn't be surprised if, if I came out and, and said that I was, but I wasn't. <laughs> All right. Uh, JP is saying, Cliff, you spoke fluent Long Island. Oh, yeah, go, go walk your dog. <laughs> That's the best I can do. That's what I get from spending three and a half months with Nicole. Any, any Long Island accent that I even try to replicate is only because of hanging out with my Long Island friends. Uh, yeah, I love. All right, here's the thing. I met JP. Uh, JP and I have talked forever online, right? And messages and things like that. JP, I don't know that we really talked uh, audio wise uh, much at all because I suddenly show up at this wedding and all of Nicole's friends, JP's coming over. Everyone is speaking with such a strong New York accent uh, and Long Island accent and, and every other accent that you can. I can't tell the difference. They just all sound. Yankee to me. And I mean that in the, the, the kindest way possible, just uh, very much a New York accent. And all I can think is, gosh, all these people I'm talking to, uh, they've got to hear me talking and think that is the most backwoods Southern Texan accent we've ever heard in our entire lives. But they had the advantage of watching me on, on Cliff Notes Live and in the house and all of that. But yeah, JP, I, uh, I love meeting you, but uh, yeah, your, your accent uh, was funny. I, I I guess I wasn't even expecting that. I like I like those accents. As long as it's not that Boston accent, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm taking the sides of the New Yorkers when it comes to those those two accents. All right, uh, nothing against Boston either. Uh, Lisa D is saying, uh, doesn't Survivor, Survivor pre-record? Yeah, they, they film the whole thing. They film it months in advance. It used to be 42 days. Now it's 29 days. How fast is that? During the last Survivor episode, someone was talking about I think they're getting ready to go to tribal council. And they talk about, you know, yesterday when we sent Jim or whoever home, it's like, gosh, are you just having tribal councils and activities every single day that you're in there? I get it. They're over in Fiji. You got all these production people hanging out. No one wants to hang out for three and a half months. So I get why they're trying to push the schedule as compress it as much as they can. And Jeff Probst is rich. He's got to come home and enjoy his, his money and all that. So, Everything happens so fast in Survivor, whereas with Big Brother, it's so drawn out. There's so much downtime. And we saw that with Sari, where she was on Big Brother last season, where she's talking about just how boring it was compared to, to Survivor. And that boredom, that downtime, that's its own form of torture. And here's the other thing that happens. I think when you're on Survivor, you don't have time to contemplate or get too paranoid about what's happening. It's it's rush, rush, rush. Hey, we got to make an alliance because tonight someone's going home. And then once you survive that one, all right, now I got to do something else because we got another one coming up tomorrow. There's never a chance to just sit back and, and come up with too many different scenarios. Whereas with Big Brother, you send someone home and then you've got a full week before anything else, you know, there's another vote held. That gives people a lot of time just to, to overthink, to double think, to get paranoid about things they shouldn't get paranoid about. I think the boredom uh, just drives up the, the paranoia uh, exponentially as compared to what you see on Survivor. And so that's why sometimes you see people maybe overplay uh, some of the things they do on, on Big Brother because they've thought through every scenario and then done it again and again and again. So different games. We see them once a week on well, a couple of times, a few times a week for Big Brother, but uh, you see the seasons on on Survivor, Big Brother. They seem somewhat the same, but the difference between pre-recording and being live does make a huge difference uh, between the two games. I've said this before. I really would have loved to have done Survivor. I would not have pictured me being the person that went on Big Brother, but that's the way it worked out, and and I'm glad it did. All right, uh, Bing Bong. Hey, Bing Bong. How are you? Said, uh, who is one Survivor from the new era you would want to play again? Oh, uh Cochran, maybe. Uh, trying to think of some of the uh, uh, some of the some of the uh, the players. Uh, Tony, I like. I know. I know not everyone liked Tony. I like Tony. I thought he was. He always kept things a, a little bit entertaining. So uh, there's a few of them. Uh, Mike Holloway. I've met Mike before. Uh, I was really cheering for. And as he considered New Era, he's a little further back, right? Uh, I don't know. Yam Yam. I, I loved him playing Marianne. Uh, now there's a part of me that says they've already won. So don't be in a huge hurry to bring them back, but I'm excited to see how they do when we have another winners type season. Hopefully it'll be a little bit further down the road, but uh, I, I did like seeing them play the game. Um, 
I'll have to think about that. Ask me again because I, I need to think about the new era survivors. I always tend to uh, to cheer for the ones who are a little bit more cerebral uh, in some ways because uh, I feel like I don't know how I do Survivor. There, there's part I'm, I'm a fantastic swimmer. I would not worry about any activities taking place in the ocean. I can paddle faster than anyone else. I can swim for my age and size. I'd surprise people doing a bunch of running back and forth on the beach. Maybe not so much, but, but I feel like I do a lot of the water challenge as well. Uh, but but I also realized that I would have to rely on a lot of strategy playing the game of Survivor. I was I would not be the comp beast. Uh, we'll just put it like that. So, yeah. So as a result, I tend to cheer for the people who I kind of see in similar positions that maybe are a little bit of the underdog. They have to fight just a little bit harder in terms of the the bartering and the the conversations. And all. So those are the ones I tend to to cheer for the most. But here's it. You know who I really cheer for the most when I watch those shows? The person who is smiling the most. Someone like Marianne. Episode one of her season, I already was a huge fan just because you could tell the passion she had, the excitement that she had uh, of being on the show, whether she went home first or whether she went home last, she was just happy that she was getting the experience. And I, I could relate to that so, so much. Uh, so anyone who shows up that's just smiling and Jag was the same one, big brother. He said in his preseason interviews, he just wanted to have fun while he's in the house. Th those are the people I truly cheer for because they've got it figured out. It it's the experience we're there for. Yeah. We all want to win the big bucks, but only one person does each season. So it's all about the experience and enjoying every moment you have on this. I don't want to get all philosophical, but it is enjoying the moment wherever that may be. And, and so those, those are the people I cheer for. All right, let's see what else we've got on here. Uh, Ed is saying, is the circle tomorrow? I want to see AI, AI Max in, in the house. I was out on Netflix watching. <laughs> I, I probably should have been watching the circle. I actually went out there looking for, it. I didn't see it, but, uh, uh, I saw an ad for Circle, but I think it was a past season. Uh, yeah, I don't know when it starts. If any of y'all know, let me know, because I am a little intrigued uh, about uh, about that. This whole AI thing, I do work uh, on the computer. Every time now I type up a, an email message or anything on my, uh, uh, on my computer, which runs Windows and Microsoft and all that, every time I write an email, I get a little thing popping up on the side saying, would you like Copilot? To, to assist you or something, which I guess is Microsoft's AI system as well. I don't know what he's going to help me with. I, I'm waiting for the AI to say, yeah, I wouldn't send that cliff. I, I don't think that's a great career move to send that cliff, to have that level of input. I, I guess right now they maybe say, oh, you may want to change your, your tenses or something. Uh, you, may have, uh, you may have too many explanation points at, at the end of that particular message. I don't know what they do. I still remember the old days where there was a little animated paperclip that would pop up say how can i help you click on that thing and all i told you was how to open up powerpoint or something i don't remember now they got ai everywhere doing everything the best of times the worst of times i don't know whether ai, AI is going to to save the world or it's just going to take us out and destroy us all 50 50 on which way we go with that uh isn't it amazing we're to the point of saying i hope those ai those ai programs i hope they're friendly I hope they like humans and they aren't like old Terminator that they just decide that they can do better without us. Uh, yeah, there's a comedian. Actually, we saw while we were up in the New York and he was on uh, uh, Jay Leno. Uh, Jay Leno. He was on uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Fallon as uh, Tonight Show. And, and he talks about it amazing. We don't have any predators. I hate that I'm stealing a joke, but I'm giving credit. That's it. It's amazing that, that man doesn't really have any predators on the earth. So we went out and created one in, in AI. Yeah, we, we can't ever leave, in, leave enough alone. We'll, we'll see what happens. But if, uh, if old Schwarzenegger shows up at my door asking for me, I'm running the other way. Because you never know. You never know what I may do in the future. All right, let's see. Uh, Misfire saying Cliff, uh, Cliff could conduct a lecture at the Spy Museum. I would love to go to the Spy Museum uh, up in New York City. New York City, in Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been there in Washington, D.C. a couple times, never had a chance to go to the Spy Museum. Remember the old Mission Impossibles where it was a cool deal that they had a tape recorder that was the size of the palm of your hand, and you could hide that inside a telephone or something and record with old tape, uh, record messages. Well, now, pff, Lord, they got, they got so much new fangled stuff and microwaves that pick up audio from 20 miles away and laser beams that'll 
zero in a, a cruise missile from from 2000 miles away and all of, it'd be a weird time to be a spy right uh who knows what they use that we don't know about i imagine there's some amazing technology uh yeah, I'd, I'd love to put me put me to work at the Spy Museum. I want to talk about the new stuff. Forget, forget that old stuff. I would, that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I think I'd be an okay spy. I don't know. I probably wouldn't be a great spy because I think I'd stand out too much. I, they'd say, have we seen that guy with the cowboy hat walking around this this block for the last three hours staring staring at that uh, that door? Yeah, I, I don't think I blend in well enough. I, I smile too much. I, I'm a little, a little too loud. Have a feeling having a loud voice and being overheard, probably not great in the spy game. Works okay in the oil field. Not, not so great when you're a spy. All right, let's see what we got. Cindy's saying Circle Season 6 premieres Wednesday. Okay. The Circle, uh, the Challenge. We still have Amazing Race and Survivor. Just a lot going on. And, and with all of that going on, you know what Sharon and I binged on this weekend? It was on Netflix. It just happened to be out there, and I guess we were looking for some trashy reality show. We watched season one of Love in the Wild. Pretty basic premise. They take, I don't know, eight men and eight women. They link them together at the very first episode, and then they have to go do different challenges. Run through forest and repel down rocks and everything. And at the end of every episode, one couple or one person goes home and and... And then all the rest of them, they have chances. If they don't like their partner, they can switch with another partner. And so you got a lot of people flipping around back and forth until finally at the very end, you've got one, one couple who's declared their undying love for the next couple of weeks or, or however long it takes before they take their vacation around the world. And yeah, it was kind of a cheesy throwaway type reality show. And yet about eight episodes, once we started watching the first couple, we kind of got hooked. So yeah, I'm, I like my trashy reality as much as I like the the highbrow mental competitions and everything else. So I'll just I'll just admit to it right now. All right, my mom is saying from old group, uh, I, I re oh uh, from the old group of Survivor, I really love Rupert. Uh, me too. Uh, Pearl Island's such fantastic. He stole everyone's shoes and sold them. It's fantastic. Uh, his game was uh, it was totally different. Amazingly, now I know Rupert's had some some health issues. I hope he's doing well. I haven't kept up with him for a while. Andy W is saying. Uh, sue me to uh, Rupert cracked me up. He was fun. He played a pretty good game, right? I mean, he was he, he was fun to watch play the game because he's a little more cutthroat than than people in the past. Now he also had some kind of uh, low moments as well. I know when they came back for the winners kind of season deal, they had to build a campsite on the beach, and he thought it was a great idea to build down underneath the sand, I guess for insulation or something, but. As a result, he and Jerry, and I can't remember who else was with them, they were cold, they were miserable, there was water all inside where they tried to build a shelter. Yeah, Rupert didn't do quite so well. I like Rupert as well. He came back and it was he and his wife. Was it blood versus water, I think? Uh, he and his wife run in. You see the love between the two of them, and of course I like that. Uh, but yeah, I loved Rupert from, from old school. I liked Rudy from the old school uh, as well, just because he was a badass. Just an absolute badass. So yeah, it's God, so many seasons. I, I ought to go back and just watch. I not watch every episode from every season. I don't have that kind of time, but just watch one or two episodes. Watch the first episode for every season. Just to remember all the contestants and, and all the people that I've forgotten so many years ago. Now, Rupert was great. Our favorite, really. I mean, I, I like season one, but season two, Australia, we in our house were huge fans of Kobe Donaldson. He was he was the man when he played that game, especially because they had luxury items back then, and his luxury item was was the Texas flag. Man, that's as patriotic as you can get. That's that's something I would have done. Uh, so yeah, we we love Kobe, and and he's done a few shows, Top Shot, and a few things here and there since then. But uh, yeah, that was uh, he and Tina at the end. I met Tina last December before last at, at Hearts of Reality incredible person just so much fun she showed us videos of a bear on her porch at her house and uh she's just a fun person to talk to so yeah that old school survivor nothing against the new school got a lot of favorites from from the old school as well all right let's see cindy hire saying got in touch with an old friend and had to verify my identity 
because he gets too many AI calls. I had to tell him something from my past. Isn't that scary? Th that now I've heard the scams where they replicate your voice and they call a grandparent and it sounds just like their grandchild saying they're in trouble. It used to be they'd claim they had broken nose. That's why they didn't quite sound right. You don't need any of that anymore. It can all be done with AI and replicate the voices. And on the much darker, seedier side, you've got all the deep fakes, people you know, creating all kinds of, uh, of risque photos that they shouldn't be creating with, with people's faces on them. And how do you deal with that? It's just a weird world. There was a show. Was it called Black Rain? I think it was Black Rain, uh, where it takes place over in Japan. And I remember a premise of that movie. Part of it was that someone had replicated, had had faked a video to show someone was guilty. I don't remember all about. I remember it had something to do with with photoshopping, faking a uh, a video, and everyone's like, "How could you do that? That's incredible." Well, nowadays, pff, you can create anything. Now, on the other hand, if you ever do something boneheaded and you're caught on video doing it, it seems like it'd be pretty easy to say, "That wasn't me." I don't care what video you have. That wasn't me. That's someone else. Someone did something with a video. How do you handle life when, when you can't trust what you're saying? It used to be, you know, I saw it with my very own eyes. Well, that doesn't do any good now. I, I can watch all kinds of videos with my very own eyes. And half of them may be fake and lead to all kinds of assumptions that, that would not be correct. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a crazy world. I, I'm in for the ride. I, I'm ready to see how it goes, but there's going to be a lot of legal and everything else that, that takes place to try to hash all this out now that, and with AI doing it behind all the, the deep fakes and all that, it's just going to get worse. Well, you won't be able to tell anything at, at any time before too long. Uh, you may start questioning your own reality. Am I really here or am I just an AI program? Hey, is it just the matrix? Red pill, blue pill? Nah, I don't know. Maybe I want to stay with the blue pill. Blue pill is kind of fun right now. Maybe I don't want to see what the world's really like. All right. Colleen is saying, yes, the, sh the shoe phone from Get Smart. I forgot the agent. Uh, what was it? Agent 89? I can't remember. Uh, let's see. No, agent 99. All right. <laughs> yeah. Colleen said, the smartphone from Get Smart. Love it. Miss Fire saying, Get Smart rules. Dun, da, da, dun, dun, da, da. I remember him walking through all the doors and, and them all closing behind him. One of my favorite shows. And then followed right up by uh, uh, by Inspector Gadget, which my kids uh, loved Inspector Gadget. All the things that came out of his hat and did all the different kind of spy things. I always thought of Maxwell Smart when I saw Inspector Gadget. Yeah, I hadn't thought about Get Smart in a long time. That a classic show. Absolutely classic. All right, Cindy's saying, what about Boss? I love Boston Rob. Boston Rob rooting for him on Deal or No Deal Island. I've really gotten hooked on Deal or No Deal. I didn't think I would. But uh, they they had some fireworks last week uh, or week before, calling people out and old Aaron, you know, kind of a a sensitive individual. He couldn't stand it anymore. He had to leave for a while. I don't blame him. And it's tough to watch your friends just get eviscerated and and all that. But uh, yeah, Boston Rob just shows that at the end of the day, he's there to win the game. He understands that you can't be dealing a lot with some of these emotions and everything else. I like Bo yeah, Boston Rob and Amber. He uh. I'll say this. I was not a fan of Boston Rob in his first season because there was a guy on his cat on his tribe who I want to say he was an Air Force colonel or uh, officer, something like that. And I just really thought, man, this guy is this guy's solid. This guy is going to play this game well. He's athletic. He's smart. He's got all this leadership. Man, he is the man. And I remember Boston Rob and a couple of others on his tribe saying, we got to get rid of him. He's too strong. He's too uh, he's too in control of the situation. And, and I remember thinking, oh, why would you get rid of the good guy? Why are y'all doing this? And, and they did it. They sent him out the door. Well, again, that was earlier days where it wasn't, the strategy wasn't so well developed. He did what I probably wouldn't have done, and, and he excelled because of it. Uh, yeah, I've always liked Boston. I met Boston Rob uh, at, at an event. Eh, it's probably been a couple of years. Talked to him for just a moment. Uh, he, he had so many people mobbing him. He's very popular soul. So we talked for just a second or two, and, and he was having to talk to some other folks. Seemed like a really nice guy, though. And he's got Amber, uh, one of the few marriages from these reality shows that stuck around for a while uh, as kids and, and all that. I got to say, uh, Rob and Amber, uh, Brendan and Rachel from Big Brother, I've, I've met them, their kids, incredible family. Well, we got a few successes here and there from the reality showman's type hookups, hook, hookups and all of that. All right, Karen Hummer is saying, uh, Jaime, 
from from Survivor, I'm trying to remember. I, I'm drawing a blank. I, I need to go back and look at my sur Survivor list because I don't remember uh, Jaime at all. There, there have been a lot of great ones. I was talking about this with Sharon. It seems like because Survivor, you've got two seasons per year, and it's been on the same number of years as uh, Big Brother, but that means that you've got twice as many seasons, twice as many contestants that have gone through Survivor as opposed to Big Brother. And you only saw them one episode per week, whereas with Big Brother, you saw three per week. So it's so much easier sometimes to forget these players from Survivor, even the fantastic ones. It is great. You know, some, some of the recent players that you know, just kind of dominated their seasons. And yet after a, a couple of seasons, we're on to not newer and better. We're just on to different, to, to new. Uh, it's tough to keep track because they go through contestants so often, so much as opposed to Big Brother, where you have one winner per year, and that's it. Yeah, we got reindeer games, things like that, but basically one winner every year. So it just feels like there's a little bit more staying power sometimes with the Big Brother winners. Seems like it to me. Maybe I just might pay a little bit more attention to Big Brother because of my own experience, but it seems like it to me. All right, wow, 7.54. I didn't know this was fly. All right, Colleen is saying, I Dream of Jeannie, Barbara Eden. I, I, we watched a lot of I Dream of Jeannie. Kind of risque. Back then, in those days, she, she even showed her belly button on TV. Ooh. Uh, shows how old I am, right? Uh, Miss Fire said, go, go, gadget coat. Yeah, was his, his coat or his hat? I guess it was both or everything. My kids watched that. The gadgets for, for me as a kid was Speed Racer. Man, having have a race car that you you push one button, they go jumping on springs up in the air. You push another button, a bunch of saws come out, and they cut through the trees and... Uh, uh, yeah, we love uh, we love the old Mach Five with all the different buttons that Speed Racer could uh, could push. That was a brutal show. Though. There are a lot of folks that didn't make it to the end of the race. If if that was true, it's like Hunger Games or, or Squid Games for for car races. There's only one winner. The rest of y'all are falling off the cliffs or going into the volcanoes and things like that. Who thought that was good kid drama back in the uh, the '60s? I guess back then, yeah, he didn't worry so much about it. Uh, love me some speed racer. And yeah, I, I dream of genie. Uh, I dream of genie and Be bewitched. It seems like they always played side by side, one then the other. The whole you know magic and all that. Got got put them side by side. Yeah, I'm reminiscing. I need to go uh, go watch a bunch of these old shows, but not tonight and, and not Wednesday because I got I got the Circle and Amazing Race and Survivor and Challenge and everything else. All right, uh, Cindy saying Speed Racer was the first crush. Speed Racer or Racer X. Yeah, you kind of had Speed Racer, the goody goody two shoes kid who wore the who wore the white uh, outfit and called his dad pops and never did anything to get in trouble. And then you had the bad boy, Racer X, who wore the black disguise and uh, and had separated from his father for some big unknown argument they had. Isn't that interesting the way those two kind of played in reality TV? Here's Speed Racer. Here's Racer X. Who's dating apps? Who's going to be going for Speed Racer? Who's going to be seeking out the bad boy? Uh, I feel there's a bunch of people to be seeking out Racer X. My favorite episode, y'all know here's my favorite episodes of Speed Racer is when uh, one of them had broken his foot or legs or something. The other one was blind. So Speed and Racer X had to drive together. One doing the wheel, the other one telling them how to go or something like that. And, and they won the race anyway. It shows shows what a couple of dedicated brothers can do when they work together, right? Yeah, that, which is why I put me on Amazing Race with all my brothers, and we will rule the world. Uh, throwing that out there for you, Bowie, or, or for you, Jim. All right, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, 757, so quick. Uh, what else did we do this weekend? Watched a lot of Aggie baseball. My Aggies are ranked number one in the nation. Woo! May not last forever, but I'll enjoy it while I can because my Rangers and my Houston Roughnecks of football – a little little work to do with with those areas, but uh, but my Aggies are doing well. We watched a show. Was it called Tower Heist? I don't remember. It was a Kevin Hart movie where he played uh, played uh, he played a, a art thief, uh, and he had a whole team that would steal stuff and everything. And uh, did I say Rangers? I meant the Astros. Uh, my my Houston Astros not doing so well. I was a Rangers fan as a kid, so so there, there's the air. But yeah, my Houston Astros, my Houston Roughnecks. Uh, but yeah, we saw this movie with Kevin Hart where he steals all this artwork and this and that. Well, he ends up getting roped into through all kinds of incredibly believable, of course, situations where he has to steal half a billion dollars in gold and he has a whole team to help him do it. And 
Ah, uh, moving. Yeah, it, it was okay. It, it was not probably quite what I would expect from your typical James Bond type movie. Uh, and it was kind of seemed like a little bit of a parody of something like that, or a parody a little bit of Ocean's Eleven or whatever. Uh, but like I say, Kevin Hart's one of my favorite uh, comedians. I loved him in Jumanji. There's just a lot of shows that Kevin Hart's done. He always makes me laugh. And so, yeah, so so we watch that. Can't even tell you what it's called. It was uh, Tower Heist or Steal a Whole Bunch of Gold from an Airplane Heist or something like that. But this was Kevin Hart. I think he's actually producer or something. That was good. I'm Again, I'm always happy when I see Kevin Hart on my screen because uh, he's usually pretty funny. All right, what else? I, that may be about it, guys. I, y'all could tell. I didn't have a whole lot planned today other than just come on and gripe about having to pay taxes because no one likes doing that. And I got that out of the way, and now it's just a, uh, just Ray. Uh, YTC JC Star. Hey, how are you doing, YTC JC Star? 1015 saying, uh, you ready for Big Brother 26? You know I am. I am too. I just need to sleep a little bit between now and then. Yeah, by the time it gets here, I'm going to be so ramped up for it. Once the cast reveal comes out and I actually start getting to attach names to faces, to biographies, then it'll start feeling real. And then I'll start talking about it and who I'm cheering for, who I'm cheering against and all. I mentioned that to, to Bowie Jane when she was on my show a few weeks ago uh, that, uh, you know, you're just a face. I don't know anything about you, but then just a few months later, I feel like I know everything about you. So. Uh, Look at that. All right, guys, it's about time. But before we before we sign off, I almost buried, buried the lead, very important little teaser for next week. Uh, not teaser, because I'm going to tell you exactly. We're going to have a special guest uh, next week. I've done it. Uh, I had Bowie Jane on here, uh, but I also had Cindy on. I, I love doing that, Cindy. I'm still so appreciative of, of you coming on. We're going to do something similar next week. Uh, next week, if he's still available, uh, and tell me if that's not the case, but I'm going to try to get Brian Hosteller on here uh, next week. Uh, moderator for the show, uh, a friend. I've, I've actually met Brian when I fl flew up to Columbus a year or two ago. When we got to hang around, drink a beer, talk to little Big Brother and all. So Brian uh, should be available next week. We'll pull him on for uh, 40, 45 minutes or so of the show. Just to find out, Brian's tried out for Big Brother uh, a few times. So we'll talk about that. We may even talk a little Ohio State versus Aggie football. And uh, Brian's saying I'm in. All right, Brian, I'll reach out to you and we'll uh, we'll get it set up. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to get Brian in here. A Angie Hung is going to be uh, showing up here a little bit later. I've, I've got to go in and get that scheduled. Ma, you got a birthday coming up. Uh, we need to get you on here as well. And and a few of you other guys, if y'all if y'all feel like coming on and and throwing yourself out there for everyone else on the show so they can see you a little bit more and get to know you a little bit more. I'm open. Uh, we'll do a little of that before we get into Big Brother season because I love hanging with you guys. And anytime I get a chance to spend a little bit more time exploring who y'all are, because y'all know who I am, get a chance to talk to who y'all are. It's kind of a cool, cool Monday. So we'll continue to do some of that. But next week, Brian's going to be on the show. I'm looking forward to it. I'll post some reminders as we get into the week. And with that, guys, I think we're going to shut it down. I hope you all have a fantastic week. If if you haven't already paid your taxes, depending on what time zone you're in, you got three hours to, to six hours. It, it, as one comedian would say, get her done. Uh, yeah, yeah, get get business taken care of, especially if you got a refund coming. But I uh, hope you all have a fantastic Monday. Enjoy every single bit of it. I will be back next Monday. Until then, uh, as I said at the beginning, if you haven't already subscribed to my show, please consider doing so. Turn on notifications. Do a thumbs up as well is always appreciated, uh, but mainly y'all have a fantastic week. Until next week, SKD143, love my wife, love my kids, love reality TV, and love you guys. Y'all have a great one, and I will see y'all next Monday. Between now and then, any questions, send me DMs on Twitter, Instagram. I'll find y'all, answer them on the show or or uh, through, through social media. Guys, y'all have a great one. I'll see y'all next week. Until then, cheers, my friends. Bye. Let me see if I can turn this off. Sometimes it's not easy. Y'all have a good evening, guys. I will talk to y'all later.